Disney investors don't appear to be too thrilled right now. And you can't blame them. A lot of the times you're seeing Disney stock creep up slowly over time. But with the results of the quarterly, the most recent Q, Q4 that actually dropped yesterday that ends the fiscal year for Disney, um, some investors are a little perplexed. And it seems like the retail investors are taking this more seriously than maybe some of the institutional ones. And so for the second day in a row, Disney appears to be on its path to closing down for the second day on a stock market. We have many, many other stocks that have been uh, wavering, anything related to tech. Any, uh, the only thing I think that was positive today was Johnson & Johnson. And that was because of their impending split, which actually their shares rose. And that makes sense. But Disney's always been fairly stable. They have a cash cow in their hospitality services that stretch from just the simple real estate interests all the way through the theme parks, cruise lines, and of course their hotel empire. Why is it all of a sudden being dismissed by investors? I believe it's fairly easy to know the reason why. It's because Bob Iger had promoted Disney Plus as the essentially the, the new linchpin in, in the company's operation. I think that was a mistake. And I think we're saying that now. Let's talk about it. Disney shares extend losses. Investors fret over streaming growth as Disney Plus turns two. That's right. Today is their two-year anniversary. Well, this today's the 12th. The story was written yesterday. But there's a problem. And this I think the losses may extend even farther. Right now, the trend for this stock is bearish. You may end up seeing it get down to 10, maybe 10% below where it was trading two days ago. That's a significant hit. Hundreds of millions of dollars lost out of your cap. That's not good. In the story, it says Disney shares are down 8% in heavy trading. It's a little more right now. Extending a sell-off that started yesterday after the media conglomerate posted weaker than expected earnings and streaming data for the September quarter. Again, that quarter ends their fiscal year. Um, I think the retail investors are getting more savvy about whether or not streaming is going to carry the day. Anyway, the article continues. The dip in the shares changing hands at about $161 is weighing on the broader market right now. The market, I think, is trading at, uh, at 159.9 or something. So it's much lower than even this. Uh, Disney is one of only 30 highly selective heavyweight stocks included in the Dow Jones Industrial Average. So a big move like today's has an impact pulling the index lower, which it did. It was off 80 points yesterday. That's substantial. Disney Plus, Plus growth slowed for the fiscal fourth quarter, adding 2.1 million subscribers to hit 118 million. That's 10 million less than it added the prior quarter and way below what they were projected to earn as far as subscriber base for this quarter. And it's odd. Well, it's going to have a hard time adding in the States. I'll show you how in just a second. They may be trying to pull this off. Disney Plus is gearing up for a major drop on Friday, which is today, the two-year anniversary of its launch, with new details and a first look at the art and trailers of upcoming content. They also have Shang-Chi and Jungle Cruise that will be available to stream today. Disney is offering, offering service, uh, excuse me, subscribers one month of service for $2, which is going to hit their ARPU pretty hard. We wonder if Disney Plus is too narrow a product and requires much greater investment in non-Disney content to widen out the product's appeal. That's what the uh, folks over at Mo uh, Moffat Nathanson said. I have to agree with that. In fact, I think we're actually seeing the, ma the maturation of the streaming market. And as I said in yesterday's video, I think we're about to see a competitive battle now rather than just a subscription battle. And I think that'll play out over the next couple of years with some services being rolled into, uh, a, you know, 
bundles together like maybe disney plus is bundled with with maybe uh you know warner media's discovery product right we don't know i'm just you know i'm just assuming this is what's going to have to happen so you'll have some a la carte now taking a quick look at the stock currently or at least the last time i took a screenshot this is going back several minutes ago as you can see this is trending bearish and is down to 160.18 it was down much lower when i checked in on it just after the 2 p.m bell right i predict this is going to close at 160 or right there i think somebody's trying to keep it at 160 and not let it fall further but that's just speculation on my part so how do you well how do they think they're going to get around this and get people excited for this streaming service that they've essentially put all their hopes into. Well, they gave us a lineup of things that people might be interested in seeing. I don't know what people, because none of this seems to interest me. You have, of course, the Roderick Rules, uh, which is basically a diary of a, of a wimpy kid. You know, it's like the sequel. You have a Predator prequel that nobody was interested in. Um, I think this is going to be a Hulu exclusive. You have Disenchanted and Cheaper by the Dozen, both remakes of better properties. Uh, again, these are all things that are going to Disney Plus. So they must not have a lot of faith in them. Um, Disney Plus uh, confirms movies headed to Star internationally. Uh, that would be the other uh, pair product that comes as, as a Disney. Uh, I know it's not really a bundle, but it's part of their extended services in other countries. Um, so they're reimagining, reimagining Romeo and Juliet, Rosalind action movie, um, The Princess, and a thriller called No Exit. So you're going to see more of that. And of course, you're going to start to see a lot of these shorts and the making of kinds of specials like you did very early on, where they kind of gave you some back background of some of these things. But I'm not really sold on this, and neither is the rap. They're not sold on the fact that that Disney is weighing, weighing, having so much weight that they're placing on Marvel and Star Wars. They don't think that's going to be enough to challenge Netflix, and neither do I. Um, I think that, you know, right now, Disney sitting at 118, 120 million subscribers, they have to, by the end of 2024, get to somewhere around 230 to 260 uh, million, 230 million to 260 million subscribers. I don't think that's possible. Um, I think they're going to fall short because, like I said, I think we've reached a saturation point for all these streaming services. And I think now it's going to be a content battle. And I think Disney's a little bit behind the eight ball. Although they are amazing at creating content, they don't seem to hold as much of a catalog as we thought. The acquisition of Fox was great, but they aren't willing to put that over on Disney Plus. They're farming that all out to Hulu. So I think they're missing out. This platform needs to be more about everybody and not so focused on children. But um, anyway, in this rap article, they're not wrong. Um, Marvel has been very disappointing of late, even in their theatrical releases. I mean, to be honest with you, in the reporting around the where, where the films division is now, which I think is somewhere in their licensing and something else, they've renamed all of their depart divisions right um the film studios lost 65 million dollars in this last quarter and so they are not starting off the new quarter well with eternals because i believe that falls into uh the you know first quarter of fiscal 2022 and i don't know what will happen after that maybe uh Doc dr strange picks it up because keep in mind spider-man's sony it's not disney I guess we'll have to see but i don't know i'm curious what you guys think do you think that uh do you think that Dis disney plus is actually the the mechanism that that disney should put all of its weight into or do you think that it would be wiser for them to stick to their traditional sources of revenue And as I just mentioned, do use the comment section down below for this video. Uh, you've just watched a uh, edited version of the Friday pre-flight, which I do every Friday right before Friday Night Tides, Friday Night Frolics, and the other Friday evening programs. Uh, today's video obviously uh, has a lot more to it if you get a chance to rewatch the live stream. I think you'll uh, find something there you might enjoy. Uh, but with that being said, support other independent creators here on the platform because they absolutely do need your support.
they aren't getting it from YouTube. Uh, they focus mainly on the mainstream, and uh, we're seeing a lot of uh, why that is, I think, right now. Anyway, with that being said, I'm going to end the video the same way I always do. Be sure to take care of yourself, take care of others, wash your hands, of course, because it's good hygiene. And until next time, bye. Thanks for visiting today. Be sure you're subscribed and hit that for alerts. Yay! Of course, like and share all of the videos that you can as it helps with the algorithm. Have a great day.